All right. It is Tuesday. Happy Tuesday to you. August 31st, 2021. Yesterday, we talked about drawing rectangles and how those rectangles create certain amounts of area. And we know the area of a rectangle if we have one side, one this side length and this side width. What do we do with those two numbers to find the area? Multiply. We multiply them. Very good. And yesterday we took that a step further and we started talking about this concept of prime or composite. As I looked around at your cactus notebooks, again, I saw everyone can draw a rectangle. Well, everyone that participated can draw a rectangle. Everyone can label the sides. You chose your own rectangle. You drew your own rectangle at its own, the own, your own side lengths. I didn't, today was the first day that I didn't make you draw it with a certain side length. I, you get to pick whatever you wanted. And so what I want to work on today is this notion of is your rectangle prime or composite? Is your rectangle prime or composite? What does this word prime mean? What does this word prime mean, Nicolin? And what does one of the side lengths have to be? That number and the other one always has to be one. So this is a rect, a prime number is always a rectangle with a side length of one. And then this is just whatever, right? That's very good. What does this word composite mean, Gage Carter? I see your hand. Gage Carter. Gage, are you there? What does this word composite mean here? Composite means it is where you can get more than one um, answer, like different numbers to equal the answer. Very good. So for composite, we can have more than one box, right? And member, member, remember, in this word composite, what word do you see here? Compose. Compose. That was kind of the trick that I tried to give you. You can compose a bunch of different boxes from the number. So what's the area of this of these two boxes? This is a really bad model, I know. Four. Good job. So this one is four and this one we don't know. Okay? So let's let's do one here. Check this eraser out. Huh? Boom. Oh, look at there. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. I got this new extension from Mr. Wise and I love it. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to draw a rectangle here. What's one side length of my rectangle? Aiden? Three. Very good. What's this side length going to be? Somebody give me, what's reasonable? What's reasonable, Aubrey? Seven. Okay, seven. What else is reasonable, Colton? Four. Four. Here's three. So like, here's three. Here's three. Is that only like one more? I think it's more than that. I think it's more than that. Levi? Eight. Perhaps. Ella? Six. Probably maybe six. I think I think we might be able to push it to only like one more. Bentley? Huh? Five. Probably only can push it to one more. Four is not reasonable super much. Is ten going to be very reasonable? No. It's, it needs to be longer for ten, right? It needs to be longer. So let's do five. So there's my rectangle for five. I drew a complete rectangle. I labeled both sides. If you don't have anything written down, you should be right. You should be doing what I'm doing so that you have something. Because 
Here's what's going to be happening with these cactus notebooks. From time to time, I'm going to collect them. And if you have, if you have an answer above your squiggly line, then you're going to get a point for that. I'm probably going to do this at least twice a month, if not every week, taking a grade on you completing your review slide. All you have to do is do it. You don't have to get it right. You just have to do it and show me that you're trying to learn math, to think math thoughts. And I'll give you points on your grade card. Anybody here for free points for just doing your work? Yeah. And so we all drew a complete rectangle. We all labeled both sides, but we all did not write whether or not our rectangle was prime or composite. Is my rectangle prime or composite? composite. Nicole? Nicolin? Prime. Pri uh, what? Prime. What does prime mean, Nicolin? Um, you can only make one square. So what's, you want to change your answer? No. Or rectangle. One rectangle? Yeah. So what's the area of my rectangle here, Nicolin? 15. 15 is my area. Can I make another box with area of 15? Would that be a rectangle with the area of 15? So now I have been able to compose multiple rectangles, which means my rectangle here is what, everyone? Composite. This is a composite rectangle because I can do three and five. I can do one and five. One and 15, I mean. And this area is 15. And this area is 15. Now, some of you had a rectangle that looked like this. One on this side, three on this side. What kind of rectangle is that, Levi? You're not Levi. You're Bentley. You're Levi. Levi, Bentley, Bentley, Levi. Got it. Um, I think it's prime because, because, um, you can't, you can't have the two flip it around, one and three and three and one. You don't want to get that That's right. There's no other way for me to make a complete rectangle with one and three, right? That's right. Good job, guys. Hey, you guys are doing a great job on your review slide. Today's learning intention. We are still learning whether numbers are prime or composite using area. We're gonna keep drawing rectangles today and we're going to determine how to find out whether a number is prime or composite. Yesterday, we learned what prime was and what composite was. Today, we are gonna determine how do I figure those two things out? How do I figure out whether a number is prime or composite? That's what we're going to talk about today. And today's success criteria is the same. I can draw the rectangle of a prime number. I can draw the rectangles of composite numbers. That hasn't changed. That is the same. Okay. We are going to be talking about math manipulatives. And I think I'm going to go over this after the recording because people online don't need this. So... Let's just go straight to our paper. Here is what we are going to do. If you are online, you're gonna to have to recreate this chart in um, on a piece of paper in your cactus notebook. So those of you online, um, I need this. Whoopsie, I knew that was gonna happen. Um, I need your squiggly line to be like that because you're going to create this chart below it. And so here's what we're going to do. We are going to use manipulatives that are at your table to make some of these. We're not going to do all of them, but we're probably going to make, um, we're probably going to use manipulatives for this one, this one, this one. Um, Probably not that one, actually. Okay. Okay. So.
So we're going to use manipulatives for these. Let's try and see. We might be able to do this one. We might be able to do that one. Okay? And so, if you are at home or online, if you would go to this slide, click this button right here. This is going to take you to a website. This website allows you to use manipulatives as if you were here with us using the actual blocks with us. So when I say make a rectangle using three, you're going to drag and drop this. One, two, three. Then you're going to take another color and you're going to say, okay, I'm going to try to make a rectangle of three again. And you're going to realize, oh, I can't do that. That didn't work. Okay. And so that means, what does that mean? That means that the number three is prime or composite? Prime. Prime. Because prime is one and me. One and me. Whatever number, whatever number you're talking about. Okay. So one times three equals three. Nothing else times anything else is going to equal three. And so what we are going to do is we are going to work in partners to figure this out. So let's take, let's do the number six. Okay. Oh, yes, I do. Thank you. Nice. I love this thing. Let's take the number six. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. Every single number that exists has a prime of one. Seven minutes. Okay, we're going to go together. Every single number that exists has a factor of one and itself because prime equals one and me. So one times five equals five. Five is prime because no other number times any other number is going to equal five, right? Because two times three is six. You tracking with me? Okay, but six, six is different because we have one and six here. Now we can do one, two, three, four, five, six. Now I have one and six, my area is six. Now I have two and three and my area is six. So I have created two different rectangles with the same area, but they look different. I have composed different rectangles, which means this number six, six equals what? Prime or composite? Composite. composite. And so as we go through our lesson today, you are gonna be working with a partner to move blocks around to determine if these numbers here are prime or composite, okay, we will talk about that. But in terms of the recording, that's all we're going to record. If you are in my class and you're watching this recording, your job now is to play with this website, play with these blocks to make a determination about these numbers here, okay? On the next slide of this slide deck, you can also use grid paper. So if you have grid paper at home, you can use grid paper to draw these things, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. We can use grid paper like this and get the same thing. Whoopsie. Three, two, one, six. All of these equal six. So six would be listed as composite. Okay? You can use grid paper. At the end of this lesson, this is what we have gone over so far in, in class. We have talked about, we've talked about 
factors, multiples, factor pairs, prime numbers, and composite numbers. You've learned so much already. And these things are going to carry you through the entire fourth grade. These things you've learned here are going to carry you through the fourth grade. We know that if we know the side length of a rectangle, we can find the areas just like we did with the number six. And they give you an example with a side length of three. I've asked you to do that multiple times. We also know that if we already know the area, so I could give you like, so I've done this both ways where I've given you a side length and asked you to draw a box. I've done it this way where I've given you the area and asked you to draw a box. Okay. I've done it both ways. So we did that. And now we know what are these numbers called? These numbers on the outside of the box, what are they called? Factors. Factors. And I haven't really talked about this very much, but the area, all that num all these numbers inside here, these are all 24, obviously. That is the same as a multiple or a product. The area is the multiple, and the area and the multiple is the same as the product. Because look, 1 times 24. Is 24 the area here? Yep. Yes. Is 24 the product of this number sentence? Yep. Yes. And if I ask you to find multiples of 24, what are you going to start with? 24. And what are you going to count by? 24. 24. Very good. And so then, just like recently, we talked about composite numbers and prime numbers. So that's what this slide is, okay? That concludes our recording today. Time to practice. Love you all very much. I will see you on the next time we are recording on the interwebs. Stopping recording. Very good job.